Hello and welcome back to Sir Kent Said. Please like, share, and subscribe and leave your comments down below. This is list number one of a two list best of 20 movies of the year. Starting off at uh, number 10 is Black Adam. Did it have issues? Yes. We didn't need the shootout at the OK Corral scene. Um, I think they could have used just like a really big dude, painted him red, put some prosthetics on him for um, the big bad at the end. But for me, it was just more important to see The Rock living out his dream after he's been chasing it for 10 or 15 years. Number nine, the greatest beer run ever. This shit really happened. Um, some dude from New York decides to talk his way onto a ship to Vietnam to deliver PBR to his buddies fighting in Vietnam. He risks his ass to deliver some motherfucking PBR. This shit really happened. Free guy. Deadpool. Deadpool. I would have got stuck calling him that. What is his name? Oh, Ryan Reynolds has a reputation in most of his movies he's done since Deadpool. He's just Deadpool again. I mean, is that bad? Um, number seven, Moon Knight. I like Moon Knight because once again, they gave shine to a character who, unless you're a comic book geek, you've never heard of before. But they also shine a light on issues of mental disease. And I thought that made it kind of important. Um, number six, Werewolf by Night. Disney finally grew a pair. It was shot in a black and white. Uh, it was shot in black and white to give it that old scary movie feeling. Um, and they also used that loophole to show the blood that they did. And boy, was there blood. And I want to see more of that. I mean, come on now. Um, number five, Prey. I love the indigenous people representation in this movie. I thought this predator was probably one of the more intimidating predators from the series. And I loved how the little girl turned out to be the smartest one in the village and the hero. So that was all like win-win for me. Number four, the Batman. I like how this was a combination of Batman year one and a long Halloween from the comics because this was Batman figuring shit out. He didn't have all the gadgets they were used to him having. And he was much more of a detective than anything else. He was truly figuring shit out. And the Riddler, being one of his more underrated villains, um, I think this is a perfect outing for him. I like how grounded and dirty and depressing the movie was, and I cannot recommend it enough. Number two, or number three, Bullet Train. Brad Pitt said that he wanted to make a movie that people coming out of the pandemic could just go have fun with, and that's exactly what this movie was. All of the actors did their own stunts because it was on a train setting, and it simply was not enough room to swap out um, actors and stunt people. And a director is known for saying that if you want to be in his one of his movies, you have to be able to do at least 70% of your own stunts. So, yeah. Um, number two, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan has not aged well. He is dealing with the consequences of his decisions. Um, he's just trying to keep his head down and stay out of trouble. Um, yeah, he just, he did not age well. He's not living well. And the last thing he wants to do is stick his head up and see Vader coming. And at one point in this movie, that's exactly what happened, or this series, and that's exactly what happens. And it does not go well for him. And number one, and I cannot speak highly, highly enough of this, Andor. Casting, perfect. Writing, perfect. Acting, 
perfect. Nobody missed anything in this series. Even if you are not a Star Wars fan, if you have a basic knowledge of colonization, that's what this is about. This is colonization in space. This is somebody coming in, taking over your shit and telling you how shit's going to go. Sooner or later, people are going to rebel. Shit's going to pop off. There are speeches made in this series that you feel. There are what I call face acting, where people get news or hear something and they just speak volumes with just a look on their face. That happens a couple of times in this movie, in the series, and I cannot recommend it enough. Even if you're not a Star Wars fan, you will get it. And this is the best series for Star Wars that they've ever done. It's that good. Ain't no Jedi coming to save these people and they know it. And that's my list. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments below. And I'll see you on the other side.